In this video we're going to determine the arc length of an ellipse and to do that we need to use elliptical functions which we've been working with for the past uh, several videos now. Uh, you can find the videos at the website digital-university.org. If you go there and then click where it says free calculus videos then scroll down to where it says integral functions you'll see we have quite a few uh, videos where we deal with the gamma integral function, then with the beta function, and now we're dealing with elliptic functions. This of course is the standard equation of an ellipse, or we can have it in parametric form, say x equals a times the cosine of psi, y equals b times the sine of psi. So the cosine of psi is x over a, and the sine of psi is y over b. Of course, the cosine squared plus the sine squared has to be 1, which equals x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. So in this video here, let's just take a simple example. Suppose we have x squared plus y squared over 4 equals 1. So a is 1, so x is just the cosine of psi. b is 2, so y equals 2 times the sine of psi, and then remember that an arc length ds, ds squared, that is dx squared plus dy squared, and dx that is minus the sine of p d phi and y that will be 2 times the cosine of phi d phi so ds squared that will equal the sine squared d phi squared plus 4 cosine squared phi d phi squared Of course, we just factored out the d phi squared. And we said that this is going to involve an elliptic function. And there's two main forms of them. The one that we're going to end up with is this, which means we have to have only a sine squared in it. Of course, this one too only has a sine squared term. But here we have a sine squared term k squared, a 1 here, we go from 0 to, in this case, theta. The maximum value theta can have, remember, is pi over 2, and this k has to be less than 1. It's a fraction 1 or less than 1. So let's go back to here. We can replace the cosine squared with 1 minus the sine squared. So let's do that. So we have 1 minus the sine squared of phi d phi squared. And now let's just collect terms and take square roots of both sides. We have ds will equal the square root. You will have 4 minus 4 sine squared plus sine squared we have minus 3 sine squared phi d phi. Now for this to be, we're going to put this into an integral form, this has to be 1, so we factor out the 4, so we have 4 times 1 minus 3 fourths 
times the sine squared. I'm going to take the 4 to the outside, so this will be a 2. This will be 1. And this is 3 fourths. So it looks like this. Now, we have to remember for an ellipse, it's not a perfect circle, of course, but we are going around 360 degrees. And we said that when we integrate, the maximum value we can have for our upper limit is pi over 2. So the maximum value then is just going to be for, that we're going to get for ds. It's going to be 1 fourth the arc length then. So what we have is putting our integral signs in. And phi can go from 0 to pi over 2. Put the integral sign in here. This will give us an arc length s, but that is only going to be 1 fourth the arc length for the entire ellipse, because we can only go 90 degrees here. The maximum value that phi can have is pi over 2. So this is going to be s over 4 where s is the arc length of the entire ellipse. And this is an s, not an integral sign. So this is the arc length of the entire ellipse divided by 4, because we can integrate only up to pi over 2, uh, not 360 degrees. So this equals, take the 2 to the outside. We have again the integral 0 to pi over 2 times the square root of 1 minus 3 fourths sine squared of phi d phi. And remember when we had the uh, integrals in standard form, right here, then we said that while there's no uh, functions that, no standard functions that represent this, its numerical value depends upon the value of theta, which for our problem is pi over 2, and for k. k is the coefficient on the sine squared term. Actually, that's k squared there. So here, for our problem, k is going to be the square root of 3 divided by 2. So this equals 2. And this is going to be the elliptical function of k, which is the square root of this term. The square root of 3 over 2, comma, phi. The upper limit is pi over 2. And we can look this up in a table there to get a numerical value for this. That's one-fourth the arc length, so the total arc length going all the way around the ellipse, multiplying both sides by 4, that equals 8. Then it's the elliptical function of the square root of 3 divided by 2, pi over 2. And again, we won't take the problem any further than this. We can look this up in a table of values. We just wanted to go through a demonstration to illustrate why it is that when you're determining the arc length for an ellipse, writing it in parametric form, that indeed it does give you, in the end, an elliptical expression. Okay. That's it for this video then. Uh, come back in other videos. We'll have more complicated forms of elliptical functions and how they can be represented in different types of um, integration problems as well.